Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and in a recent video, we tested and set up this um, Apple PowerBook G3. And it's been about a week or so since I uh, got the cord for it and fired it up and set it up. And I've been able to install some software on here, and so um, with that said, I want to make a video this time showing it doing some stuff instead of just installing stuff on it and installing hardware, that is. <laughs> so what is this exactly? Well, this is a Apple PowerBook G3. Um, this is a Pismo, I believe it's called. It dates from the year 2000. Originally came with 64 megs of RAM. I added um, an extra 64 to it, so we got 128 megs. I believe it had a 10 gig hard drive originally, but that wasn't in here when I got it because Goodwill takes hard drives out of their um, parts machines for privacy reasons, but thankfully the um, hardware was still in there for it. And so um, on video we added a 16 gigabyte compact flash card with an IDE adapter, which is working brilliantly. And for um, processor we've got a, um, a PowerPC G3 clocked at 400 megahertz. So, um, yeah, I am very happy with this computer so far. But before we turn it on, let's um, take a look at some of the um, exterior aspects of this computer. On the front, we um, don't have a whole lot, it appears. Um, just uh, the latch for the screen. And two more latches, the left to release the battery and the right latch to release the optical drive. Spin it around to the right side we get our optical drive which is barely functional. Um, you may recall in our previous video on this computer we had trouble loading an OS because it refuses to read from uh, most CDs but it'll read just fine from a DVD though so I had to burn my uh, Mac OS 9 image to a DVD and that surprisingly um, got this computer up and running. And we got a fan right here along with a Kensington lock slot. And on the back we've got a um, power input and if you open this door it will reveal a plethora of ports. Something you will not see from Apple these days. Right here we've got a um, line input I believe. A um, speaker or headphone output two USB ports, I believe it's 1.1, Ethernet, two Firewire ports. Um, you see at this um, point in time Apple was really really pushing um, the Firewire um, connectors really really hard. So yeah, um, most um, Apple computers, mainly the um, Power Series, um, um, really sported these uh, Firewire ports. I never really used Firewire back in the day um, except for my mini DV camcorder to import um, footage to my PC but other than that that's all I, I never really use it for much else um, anyway right here we got an S video output connector um, I'm surprised to see this um, actually a VGA output and a 56k modem and I want to say right here is a um, infrared port. And moving over to the left side, we get a PCMCIA um, slot. And right here is the um, battery, which is fully functional. I don't know how long it lasts, but it lasts um, long enough to be considered usable. And that's really surprising for a 19-year-old um, battery. One really cool thing about this laptop that you really don't see on other Apple laptops um, then and now is the fact that this laptop is quite modular. You see, um, remember those latches on the front we mentioned a while ago? Well, um, watch what happens when I pull this latch right here on the right side. optical drive comes out with no problem and I probably should be replacing this at some point since it barely works but oh well and um, I believe you can um, 
substitute this for a secondary battery, which is really cool. But we'll go ahead and pop this back in. And same thing with the battery. Just pull this out. And here's your battery. And again, this battery is still fully functional, which is really, really cool. Upon opening up the screen, you're presented with a uh, trackpad with a mouse button, just one button. Keep in mind, this is um, an old-style Apple laptop, so one button is all you get. And a um, fully functional keyboard, even though the escape key right here is trying to escape. I might try to put that back on at some point, but it looks like there might be a little bit of broken plastic, which could be a problem. And once again, I want to show something that you will never, ever see again on a modern-day Apple laptop computer. Just uh, pull these tabs away on the uh, keyboard and lift the keyboard out. And you get immediate access to memory um, expansion, which we saw in our... Uh, last video regarding this computer and the screw flew away somewhere inside the laptop that's really not a good thing and right here is um, our 64 meg uh, memory module that we added in the last video I added that because I assumed that this computer didn't have any other RAM in it um, apparently there is another slot somewhere I forget where but it's not as easy to access but anyway that's where the RAM goes and this does have 128 megs in it originally had 64 and right here is where the hard drive goes or in this case our compact flash card adapter with a 16 gig compact flash card installed which works brilliantly in this computer and now to find where that screw um, ran off to so yeah this is the kind of expandability and repairability that you will never find on a modern day Apple computer. In fact, a lot of um, Apple laptops at this time um, were still kind of hard to upgrade and repair, especially the the snow um, colored iBook G3s, which I've shown on this channel before. Those things are impossible to get to the hard drive. You can, I think you can get to the memory pretty easily, but if you want to get to the hard drive, you're going to have a hard time. So um, that's what's nice about this PowerBook G3. It's made for enthusiasts in mind, I believe, which is really, really cool. Something I know I keep saying this. This is something you just never see with Apple these days. Um, Everything is closed box, which I don't like it. <laughs> okay, keyboard's back in place along with our um, loose escape key. Alright, got a USB mouse hooked up just to make it easier for me to control this computer on camera. And I've even got a USB flash drive connected to the back of it. Because this computer um, supports USB flash drives thanks to Mac OS 9. So let's go ahead and power it up. healthy looking screen there Got our happy Mac now since the last video I've actually um, found a restore CD for this for this specific computer on winworld.com it's a uh, a restore CD specifically made for the um, PowerBook um, G3 Pismo and I thought that was really cool, so I restored it from the um, factory image. And this computer is pretty much as it was from the factory. Although, admittedly, I'm really not seeing much difference between it and a standard Mac OS 9 install. But still having access to that is um, kind of cool. So we'll get booted up eventually. There's my custom uh, vintage Apple wallpaper. 
right. And the um, date and time is still being kept just fine on this computer, surprisingly. So let's go to About This Computer, Mac OS 9. This is 9.0.4. Probably could upgrade it. And by the way, um, I am aware that Mac OS 10, the early versions of Mac OS 10, should work just fine on this computer. But that's not what I got this computer for. I, I bought it for um, using vintage Apple software on here. I wanted a more 90s style Apple experience with this laptop. So um, Mac OS 9 is staying on this Macintosh. So um, let's go to the Apple System Profiler. Any day now. All right, PowerPC Enabler 9.0.4. I got QuickTime 4.1. Um, plenty of virtual memory. And this is a PowerBook keyboard with inverted T. <laughs> That's probably referring to the um, trackpad. PowerPC G3 clocked at 400 megahertz. Of course, you already knew that. And some ROM info there for you. Devices and volumes. There's my USB mouse and the um, flash drive we have connected. DVD-ROM, which barely works, as I mentioned before. And our display card is a um, is a ATI Rage M3, I believe, with eight megs of video memory. So, pretty good video card on this computer. And it has a 1024 by 768 display. So quit out of that. And let's um, check out some of the software I've installed on here. I was actually installing some stuff today on it, just for this video. Things I do for you guys. <laughs> okay, let's go to Applications. And see what we got here. Okay, we got Office 98. Just load up Microsoft Word, Macintosh Edition. I know I always say this about this version of uh, Microsoft Word, but I love how um, Clippy has been replaced with a um, retro-looking compact Mac. <laughs> always found that amusing. Okay, let's see so we can type something up on here. Yeah, the um, keyboard on here is not the worst I've ever typed on, but certainly far from the best I've ever typed on. But for a uh, laptop from the year 2000, you really can't be asking for a whole lot. Don't save. You know, I've never used PowerPoint on here before. Are there any... Uh, like uh, sample documents we can load up on here? Probably not. Oh well. So yeah, there's uh, Office 98. Now as for some games, well, we got plenty of those. Starting with the um, game that you have to have on every um, old-style Macintosh, in my opinion. Word Munchers. Okay, we have to manually set the display. I remember playing this game um, quite a bit on the Max at elementary school. Okay, A is in cake. Uh, and there's not many, it looks like. There we go. Okay. Pray. Rage. 
range, cage, uh, waste, claim, bay, quake, place, bail, uh, crate, um, and I made a goof there. I always thought that was supposed to be Grimace from uh, McDonald's commercials. <laughs> okay, uh... Figured I would have um, gotten past here by now. You would think I would have um, figured this out by now, seeing that I'm almost 30 years old. But, anyway, there's uh, word munchers for you. Apparently I got a high score. I'm surprised by that. <laughs> Alright, we'll switch it back to millions of colors. Okay, what else do we have on here to play? We got an Ultimate Doom. This was, uh, today was the first time I ever played Doom on a Macintosh. Doom, um, of course, is the only first-person shooter I'm really interested in. Probably could have changed the screen resolution on this, but oh well. You may notice um, as I'm playing games on this on this Macintosh that are also available on Windows and DOS that the um, MIDI based music in these games are not going to sound nearly as good in my opinion. So let's, uh, I believe it's D to shoot, and yes it is. Better be careful, I might be losing health here. <laughs> Usually play this with an invincibility cheat, but I'm not this time. Probably shouldn't have been in that gunk. <laughs> Guy's dead now. There we go. Alright, that's um, Ultimate Doom for Macintosh. Not a bad port, I must say. Yes, go ahead and switch back to the proper color mode. Alright, what else do we have here? We got The Incredible Machine 3, one of my favorite games of all time. Of course, I am um, more familiar with the PC version. But it plays pretty much the same as the PC, although the music isn't nearly as good. Okay, put both bowling balls into the large column box in the center. You know, I'm, I've never really been much into um, old Macs like um, this. 
but there are some a few little things from uh, from Apple that I do enjoy, um, namely this, because this gives me the full experience of um, vintage Mac OS, um, such as Mac OS 9, without having to um, take up a whole bunch of room in my house with a full-fledged desktop computer. For a lot of people, that's perfect for them, but for me, who I, where I'm more into uh, IBM compatibles, I want to save what little space I do for the IBM compatibles. So having something like this, I can just uh, pull it out one day, use it, and when I'm done, just put it away easily and it not take up any room. Alright, some gears and belts. Unlike the PC version, I have to um, hold down the mouse button to uh, move these parts. since I've done this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that had a little too much power to it. There we go, I think. By the way, I love this song. Although, again, on the PC, sounds a lot better. <laughs> okay, put three bowling balls into wicker baskets. Ah, my favorite, hayseed. <laughs> there we go. So there you go, there's uh, The Incredible Machine 3 being played on a PowerBook G3. And not too shabby either. Alright, now let's play a little bit of SimCity 2000. Another game of my childhood, although again I played it on the PC. Let's just do a scenario or a already made city. A place called Bayview. And here's evidently a place called Bayview. Not too bad. And of course we gotta do the budget. Apparently we're in the year 2189. Meaning that I'm uh, 200 years old. Let's head on to something else. Hmm. What else can we play? Oh yeah, how about some uh, 3D Ultra Pinball? Which, for this, we're going to have to mount an ISO image. Which is no problem on this computer. Thanks to a program called... Um, Virtual CD Imager. Now, you can only mount toast files on here um, officially. But I have no trouble at all loading a uh, ISO image on here. I can uh, find the ISO image. There it is. And we just quit out of that, and our 3D Ultra Pinball CD is um, mounted. 
and we can go ahead and uh, fire it up. Always love this intro video. And again, the music sounds different from how it sounds on the PC. Now, um, my good friend Elmol3 here on YouTube will tell you that the um, superior version of this game is the um, Apple Mac version because the, he thinks the music is better on here. I personally think the PC sounds better, but that's just my uh, nostalgia talking. Keep in mind, I grew up with a PC. Luke grew up with a uh, Macintosh, so obviously the both of us are going to be a little bit biased. See if I can figure out what the controls are on an apple. Okay, shift for uh, right flipper, control for uh, left flipper, and and launch with the down arrow key. It does amaze me um, how good a deal I got on this laptop. Um, I only paid $10 for this at the Goodwill and Winston-Salem a couple weeks ago. Of course, I did have to spend another 30 some dollars on a uh, power cord in order to get this up and running. If you ask me, I think $30 was probably a little too much for a power cord for um, this laptop. but. Because it has the Apple logo on it, apparently it's made of unicorn blood, so it's got to cost an arm and a leg. But this laptop is, a, is physically in good shape, um, except for the um, bezel and the optical drive's a little smashed up. And there's some uh, sticker residue on the top from the price tag Goodwill stuck on it. But I think I got most of it off with some goo gone. This game, of course, is one of the very first computer games I ever played. First played it on my Ants Gateway 2000 um, in the summer of 1995. And then in December of 1995, um, the day after my dad bought our Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT, he bought a copy of this game from Sam's Club. So this wound up being one of the first computer games we ever owned. I kind of meant to do that just to get this game going a little bit quicker. <laughs> I don't want to keep you guys um, watching this video too long. I know you had things you'd rather be doing right now. <laughs> okay, put in my name. Do the core. And that's 3D Ultra Pinball on a um, Apple Mac. We'll just drag and drop the ISO uh, to the trash. Okay, now what? I got another game I want to show. Um, this is a very popular game for DOS computers. It's a classic. I, I, I played it before. This is The Secret of Monkey Island. Um, I didn't even know they had a Macintosh version of this game until today. So I went ahead and loaded it up on here. So. 
Let's compare how it um, plays to how it plays on a DOS computer. Obviously, as you can tell, the music on the PC version is incredibly superior to the Macintosh version. But of course, this game was designed to be played on a PC originally. So let's go into the scum bar. I remember playing this game uh, and beating it all in two days on the uh, Legend 822 back in summer of 2013. Of course, that wasn't that long ago, I guess, but... I got through it quickly because I cheated by using a um, online walkthrough. <laughs> okay, open door. Okay, maybe the sound effects are better in this game. Um, on the Mac version, that is. <laughs> Let's talk to the dog. <laughs> That's a tradition on this game. Ah, uh, product placement. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close out all this before my ears start bleeding. So yeah, PC version, far, far, far superior, <laughs> mainly for the music. So, um, what else do I have to show? One more thing, actually, and this is not a game. This is Virtual PC version 4. I believe it's version 4. Of course, it's not going to say there. <laughs> and with this, this is um, Connectix Virtual PC before Microsoft got their grubby hands on it. Or maybe not grubby, they um, didn't really mess it up too badly. In fact, the first, first version of Virtual PC I ever used was Microsoft's version from 2004. I remember discovering Virtual PC in late 2005, and my life was changed. <laughs> Being able to uh, have virtual computers inside your actual computer to mess around with without worrying about um, destroying your actual data on your computer, it was fascinating to me. So anyway, this is um, the version that predates the one I used back in the day, and this one's for the Apple Mac. And this was pretty much the only way you could get Windows on a Macintosh computer back then, because this was before Macs used Intel chips, and you didn't have the option to boot camp Windows on them. In fact, I, I think I remember hearing that... Um, Apple was going to start using proprietary um, CPUs um, sometime soon and moving away from Intel. So we'll have to see what happens there. But anyway, um, earlier today, just for just to show on this video, I set up a 
virtual Windows 98 machine on here and you can see it loading right here apparently this was made before virtual PC editions because I wasn't able to find it on this version so um, once the mouse gets captured on here it's captured for good you can't just um, drag and drop stuff from the actual o from the host OS into the virtual OS so um, yeah this is how you were able this is the only way you were able to run Windows on a Macintosh back then And with this being before hardware virtualization, it really didn't run all that well. <laughs> and just for a few larks, let's head into full screen mode. I don't know if it's going to fill the screen, and it does. Okay, in full screen mode, the Mac menu bar may disappear. Holding down the command key will make the menu bar reappear. Okay. So uh, let's change the resolution in Windows to 1024 by 768. <laughs> this is hilarious. Looks pretty legit, doesn't it? <laughs> And the reason I um, put 98 on here was simply for the fact that this computer was built in the year 2000 and Windows 98 was still um, the current version of Windows in 2000, um, not counting Windows 2000, of course, and Windows ME, which came out later in the year. But yeah, Windows 98 running on a PowerBook G3. Connectic CPU. <laughs> instead of an Intel CPU. And it emulates a S3 Trio 64 video card. So yeah, Windows 98 on a PowerBook G3. <laughs> I'm sure this was fine if you were doing a very, very minor um, Windows related task. But for like heavy duty gaming, would not recommend this at all. <laughs> I'll go ahead and shut the virtual machine down. And there you go. <laughs> and that was Virtual PC 4.0 for Macintosh. Okay, that's pretty much all there is um, I want to show in this video. Um, what do I think of this laptop? Well, um, I think this is the perfect um, retro-style Apple computer for my needs. It's modular, easy to upgrade, easy to repair, and I can uh, use it anywhere I want, put it anywhere I want, store it anywhere I want without having to worry about using, a using up a whole lot of space um, like a desktop does. So this is going to become my main vintage Apple so um, you may be seeing this um, computer a little bit more um, in the future I'm very glad I found this at Goodwill the other week um, this was definitely um, money well spent so until next time this is Billy Core signing off thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall if you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.